Welcome to the end of year video from High Voltage, where I'll touch on the highs and lows of the year, as well as some of our plans for next year. Before I start on that though, I want to share some Christmas gifts because I just got a parcel in from HVHQ with some goodies. First up are these amazing carbon infused peak gears for both the 27 DMO1 and DMO2. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much further I can push things with the DMO2 motor in particular after I managed to strip the teeth on the nylon gear and my modified motor. I'll do a video for you all on the installation of these in the new year. Let me know in the comments which motor you want me to try at first with this new gear, the DMO2 or the larger and more powerful DMO1. Next here is the new Egg Rider C1 and this is the long awaited third generation display from the guys at Egg and promises to be a big step up from the Egg Rider V2. It still comes in the usual nondescript white box but it's a bit larger this time to accommodate a larger screen size, which is intended to be mounted more centrally on your bike. There is quite a bit of flexibility with this though. My initial thoughts are that it looks and feels like a nice bit of kit and at 199 USD, it really kind of needs to be because it's almost twice the price of the V2 version. The buttons all have a really nice click to them. The display looks really nice and bright and it's definitely a huge step up from the Egg Rider V2 in that regard. I will of course do a full review of the C1 as soon as time and mostly weather conditions allow. I'm really hoping that this display is sunglasses friendly, which tends to be the Achilles heel for most e-bike displays. Anyway, onto the year in review. Let's start with the absolute best thing from the year, which for me is the Cottonmouth. This is the dual drive train beast from North Bay Bikes in California. It's powered with a super compact lightning rods drive and a high voltage controller kit. I've had this going at 80 kilometers an hour up eight to 10% grade hills and coming back the other way, it easily blew past hundred kilometers an hour. So I'm not sure what the true top speed is yet. Maybe they'll let me try it out on the local airstrip or I could have a quick run down the main highway in the early hours one morning. For people that are new to this build, it's a true dual use bike. If you want to ride it like a regular e-bike at the 750 watt legal limit, you can do so. There is a full 11 to 48 T cassette on the right hand side and this is what you put in the human power with. You don't have to worry about the chain line or bending sprockets with too much power. The system will only wear like it would on a non-powered bike. On the left side is a 219 chain and sprockets with an arrow straight chain line and this is designed to work with the 6 kilowatt peaking lightning rods drive. It really is the best of both worlds. It's also extremely quiet because the primary reduction is belt driven and not a gearbox. It's extremely smooth to ride as an e-bike to get you some exercise at road legal limits. I have this set to 750 watts of power and it's a nice bike just to ride along. Combine this with the variable regen braking and you have a bike that in a hilly region of the world lets you ride all day long without a recharge. On the same bike though, with the touch of a button, you can de-restrict it and hit, well, silly speeds really. I don't ride around anything close to the top speed of the bike, but it's nice to have the ability and the acceleration is an awesome feeling. There are now about four people in various stages of building these out. The one guy after taking delivery and riding for a while actually put his gas bike up for sale. I'll do a feature on some of these new builds in the new year as well. Next year, I want to try and see if I can get this bike to be road legal in the scooter class. I know it has better brakes than most scooters out there and I'm pretty sure it's better built. All I need to do is get the lights sorted out and I'll be able to challenge the local regulations. I've not got a clue if I'll succeed or not, but it ought to be fun finding out. If you're interested in a cotton mouth of your own, the details for North Bay Bikes, where you can get anything from a complete machine to a frame, can be found in the description. And you can also make contact via our Discord server. Next up onto 27 Motor. And I've got to say our year with 27 has been a very mixed bag. We managed to get both of the motors running with the ASI Back 855, the DM01 showing that it's at least on par with the BBS HD in terms of the amount of power and performance it can handle. The 43 to 1 gear ratio is actually more optimal than the 22 to 1 of the BBS HD allowing for effective pedaling cadences even at 72 volts. In terms of the DM02 we managed to prove that it's the controller that's the limiting factor in the motor. In terms of 2.7 the company, things are a bit more mixed. It often seems to be a case of one step forwards, two backwards, at least from a DIY point of view. 
The latest firmware is a huge downgrade, for example, with massive restrictions on the firmware to the point that you're not even able to change simple things. And it's a real shame because over the course of the year, the firmware has been improving to the point of being much more on par with the CYC Photon, which comes in at near triple the price of the O2. I can see why they would want to lock out some of the menu options as they were genuinely motor braking, but not at the cost of locking people out changing essential things like speed limits and power limits. I don't see why the menu system could not just have been changed to eliminate the questionable items only. Things like the number of pole pairs, but keep things essential to the riders. We actually gave 2.7 a list of things that really needed to be removed and kept a long time ago. So it's really quite disappointing to see this latest firmware lock people out entirely. My personal advice is not to load the November or December firmware for the DMO1 or DMO2. The other frustrating part of this was we had a firmware test group set up in Discord that were willing to test firmware updates. And it was working quite well up to the point where 2.7 decided they didn't want to use it anymore. We suggested that 2.7 make the firmware for the controllers open source so that the DIY community could improve them. It was a huge game changer for the Tong Shen motors as the community was able to make huge improvements on the stock configuration. For whatever reason though, they are taking the path of locking things down now. I don't think it will be appreciated by the market they're selling to. I don't think it's going to be well received by our, by our community. In fact, I know it's not well received by our community. And I think that it's, it really is a bit of a slap in the face. Maybe they're doing it to be super cautious in terms of warranty and returns. But I think I've proved that the motors are capable of quite a bit more. Hopefully 2.7 will consider things and make some changes to go back more to the way things were. In terms of upgrade kits for the motors, we are still stuck in a bind with the torque sensor. We can get everything running beautifully with cadence-based powers for both DMO1 and DMO2. However, the torque sensor requires a circuit which is embedded into the stock controller to produce a signal that the ASI can respond to. And we're still waiting on information from 2.7 to see if this will be possible. Until this move forward, the kits will kind of be in limbo because yes, we can make one, and if you want a really fast bike, it, it will definitely work. But without the torque sensor, will it actually be good value for people? And to me, it's questionable. And we never do anything just for the sake of doing it. Uh, on to Bafang. And 2024 was set to be a big year for the Bafang DIY motors with the release of the M635. We had an upgrade kit pretty much ready to go with final testing about to get started. And at this point, the Fang rather pulled the rug out from under the whole party. We're still not entirely sure why they decided to do that midway through the year, but we're very pleased that one of our suppliers has now informed us that they're going to be restarting production as part of a line refresh, which meant the discontinuing of all UART protocol motors in favour of Canvas. This of course means the end of the BBSHD, which is a shame because it's been a true workhorse of a motor for the last 10 years. Testing will now resume with the upgrade kit for what is the torque sensing BBSHD in early January in California where the weather is a bit better than the slush that seems to be permanently on the road here. So expect to get an update on that at some point in January. It is good news though because I think it would have been a real shame if Bafang had abandoned the market to CYC in 2.7. It's also a wake up call I think to 2.7 with regards to how they market the DMO1 because they're now going to be competing directly here with the M635. All things going well, we'll be able to officially release the high voltage upgrade kit for the torque sensing BBSHD at some point early next year. Next up is Discord, and we are very rapidly approaching the 5,000 members mark, which for something that was set up during COVID to let a few friends chat to each other is pretty special. The image you're seeing scroll up in the background here represents the top 50 people making contributions to the community. A huge thanks to everyone on the list and also thanks to everyone on Discord. It's really cool to see essentially what is now a mostly self-sustaining community making some awesome bikes and light electric vehicles. There are way too many contributors to pick out individuals, but I will make a special mention for Dags, who has been with us from the very beginning and always has time to help out new members get acquainted. So huge thanks to Daryl. Look out for a video over the new year where we get to look at lots of the bikes that people built and submitted to Discord over 2024. 
Hopefully they will inspire people with their projects for 2025. Speaking of 2025, I have quite a few personal goals for the year and ones for high voltage as well. First up is getting proper lights and signals for all the bikes that I want to take out on the road. This is part of a precursor to trying to register some of my vehicles with an eye to being able to ride with traffic legally. I think the biggest chance I have with that is to get my Suron finally built out. I've now secured a proper front brake for this build so with a bit of luck I will finally get that bike finished. I have my CYC Photon currently winging its way out to CYC in Hong Kong so fingers crossed all of the issues that have plagued that motor for me will finally get resolved. I very much like to use it with my bamboo bike and have a nice cruiser bike for fitness. I have learned my lesson though and I'm going to be keeping this build strictly within the legal limits just for exercise use only. In addition to this there'll be lots of content with the M635 and the 27 motors with the new peak gears installed and hopefully a new fat bike build on the way as well so lots of stuff to look out for. Anyway I feel like I've talked enough for one video so I'm going to leave it here. A huge thanks to everyone that supports the channel especially all the channel members. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.